All righty. Um, so out of Italy, we have our main man, Thomas, Thomas Bertani, founder of Oracle, Oracleize. He's going to talk to you guys about how we can tap into Oracleize and bring information and data to our dApps. Thank you. Hello to everyone. Um, and thank you for having me here today. So uh, where is the clicker? <laughs> thank you. So during this presentation, I'm going to uh, give a short update on the status of Oracle Eyes, and I'm going to explain some of the uh, next steps and things we have in the workings. So um, we started operating as an Oracle approximately four years ago on Ethereum, uh, just after the mainnet launch. And I remember during those first presentations, I had to spend like uh, pretty much 50% of them explaining what an Oracle was because it was not obvious back then. Now everyone knows what an oracle is, so thanks God, I can just uh, waste uh, half a slide um, to show that. So basically, an oracle is just like an actor in the blockchain that facilitates the communication uh, of smart contracts with the external world, so that those contracts can reach out to like uh, external data. And for example, if they need a price feed or something like that, um, they can use an oracle to get uh, data from, from the internet or um, like any other data from an external context. So the oracle is like a strange actor because this is a world where we are trying to get rid of intermediaries. Still, uh, an oracle is like a new intermediary, right? So what we want to do is like to ensure that this intermediary um, doesn't uh, like uh, degrade the uh, benefits or compromise the security of the network. So this is why it's important for uh, the Oracle to basically provide new functionalities that the blockchain is not capable of providing itself while, um, um, while, while staying safe. So the Oracle should uh, either be decentralized or give similar uh, guarantees. So we are going to see that in the presentation as well. Sorry, how do I go to the next slide? Yeah, but it doesn't work. Ah, this one. Um, cool. So um, this pie chart is probably too small for you to see the details, but it will help. So this is like um, um, showing the distribution of use cases that we have seen uh, with the Oracle-based uh, smart contracts. So we basically try to look on uh, GitHub uh, for the projects based on uh, Oracle Eyes, which is the most widely used Oracle today. And th there are approximately 1,000 projects. So those 1,000 projects uh, um, have, e each one of them has its own use case. We try to define some uh, categories, which you find here. So as you can see, gambling is accounting for approximately one-fifth so 18% of um, the end of the, um, like, as for the number of projects. So this is quite significant because it means that there are many projects in need of uh, random numbers that look for an oracle in order to solve the problem as they don't want to generate a random number on chain because they, they want to ensure the miners um, are, like, don't collude with the generation of the random number. So. Um, another major use case is like uh, ICOs, which means uh, typically price feeds, like they need to set the price of Ether maybe um, in USD or in some other fiat uh, currency. So it's important for them to reach out to a web API, like an exchange uh, API, and check what's uh, like the exchange rate. So uh, this is also the, the case for a similar case for assets and tokens in general. So there are some tokens that maybe need a collateral um, in, to be uh, dependent on the price of something. For instance, that there may be like a token that needs to check the price of gold or the price of silver or something else. Um, so this is another major use case and there are many uh, like projects doing that, smart contracts in need of that. Um, there are many other uh, like use cases such as insurance, uh, finance, uh, and so on. But as for the number of projects, so there are not as many as the gambling uh, one. 
So we have recently uh, rebranded from Oracleize to Provable to reflect uh, the way we are changing and to reflect the fact that like our focus is on like securing this providing of data to the blockchain and on the fact that we want to provide some proofs on the fact that the data we get from the off-chain context is really authentic and it's impossible for us uh, to manipulate it. So the main technologies we use are like blockchain um, as this is the context where we provide the data in the end and trusted execution environments. So trusted execution environments are like uh, uh, often referred to as like trusted computing techniques as well. One of the major one is Intel SGX, but there are many others. The idea is basically to use some kind of um, guarantees of hardware isolation to execute some critical piece of code. And the critical piece we need from trusted execution environment is the so-called attestation. Attestation means that basically we have a signature coming from uh, uh, like the provider of the technology that proves some uh, claims coming from the code. So basically you can have a piece of code running in a secure environment according to whoever provides the trusted execution environment. So we don't want to trust the trusted ex the execution environments, the TEs in full, because if we were to do so, blockchain wouldn't be useful. So if we were to trust in full the providers of those uh, like hardware isolation, then we could simply ask them to run the blockchain and, and we wouldn't be here today. So the idea is that since blockchain is not capable of um, like securing uh, non-deterministic processes, such as the one of fetching data from web APIs or the generation of a random number and things like that, we try to get the best from blockchain and from TEs. So we try to have them work together well in a complementary fashion. And this is what Provable is trying to facilitate. So after um, like four years of work, we stopped for a second and we tried to look around and see at like um, what was missing, right? Um, so basically on, on the left, you see what the community wants according to uh, the material we had collected, which means uh, all people reach, reaching out to us or uh, all the discussions uh, we had visibility of. And basically what we saw is that um, like ease of use was critical for people approaching uh, uh, blockchain first. And when they design smart contracts, uh, quite often uh, they, they don't want to have an extra pile of complexity just because of the Oracle. They want to have like a, rel a reliable Oracle, a reliable way to get data, but without having to, you know, study, um, you know, way too much material or without having to basically interact with a complex uh, interface. So this is why um, we try to design like a, a simple interface, uh, which is, which uh, from like an outsider view, like a starter, it looks like uh, a very simple API call. Like they just call one function called uh, Oracleize query and they solve the, their problem of getting data into their contract. So uh, th this is like a, a simple interface and under the hood, it's very complex, but the user doesn't need to see it unless he's interested. Um, another thing is like uh, reduced cost. So it's important for um, smart contracts uh, not to have too much gas overhead while using uh, uh, an Oracle because basically the Oracle is like an infrastructure piece. It's something many applications need in order to function properly. So if you have like high gas costs involved, what happens is that you are propagating like an inefficiency all across the network in many contracts. So it's important uh, um, like not to blow the network and also not to like um, increase too much the user cost of interaction with the application to have low um, gas costs while interacting with an Oracle. Data security, data security is another one, um, which basically means that uh, you don't want to compromise the security of your application. So this is why um, when you get data from the external world, you need something that we call authenticity proof uh, that shows the data is authentic and it has not been compromised. Um, so this is why we use the multi t approach that I had explained. The idea is that instead of using a single um, like uh, TEE, like Intel SGX, to secure the data fetching from the web API. You use more than one technique, um, and basically you, make, you have the user choose 
um, what kind of technique they, they, they want to rely on. So at the moment, Oracle is um, provable is using uh, Intel SGX, uh, Qualc the Qualcomm Trusted Execution Environment, and the Ledger Nano S, other than TLS Notary. So you can use these techniques to secure your data fetching or to secure your query. This is critical, and the idea is that um, without those technologies, the, the Oracle would need to be fully trusted, which is not what you want. So thanks to those, to those techniques, the Oracle is not trustless, but is trust minimized as much as possible. So basically, you have the proofs, you can verify the proofs, and the guarantee is that if the Oracle does answer, then the result is authentic because of those proofs. Uh, decentralization is another critical aspect, which means that um, you don't want the um, you, you don't want the Oracle to just stop answering and to compromise the security of your application. This is the case for most smart contracts that need to be long running. The reality is that most contracts we have seen in production right now have some kind of owner or administrator, so they can actually be stopped and they will probably be stopped. Still, you don't want the Oracle to compromise uh, like the normal functioning of your application. Um, and security, of course, can play an important role uh, there as well. Um, so as for the cost effectiveness, what we have recently done is like reducing the cost for all the basic uh, in queries and interaction with the Oracle um, of around 10%. So in the best case, it's reduced by 50%. So it means that the gas costs you had before to interact with the Oracle are even lower. While the features, uh, uh, like why, why there are new features, so we are extending the set of features. For example, two new features uh, um, we are about to release, and we have already released on testnets. Are one is this uh, support for uh, token payments. So if you are basically designing your contract uh, um, and you need to pay for the Oracle cost, for example, the future transactions that will deliver the data back to your contract you don't necessarily have to pay in ETH uh, um, anymore, in the sense that maybe um, your application will need to run for you know, a year or so, and you don't want to uh, depend on the price of ETH. So what you can do now is like uh, buying some stable coins and use the stable coins directly to pay for the future cost. So this is quite important uh, for uh, the operator of the smart contract, if any, and they can just pay in uh, uh, USDT, for instance, in Tether. Um, or in other like uh, uh, popular stable coins. And also gas bump bumping is important for um, like uh, ensuring that a long running application um, is always uh, responsive as the network congestion uh, changes. So for instance, when you design uh, your smart contract, you need to tell the Oracle what is the gas price for that it should use to send back the data. This may change significantly over time, so having some features to change it um, is really is important. So um, right now, Oracle Eyes can be used either directly, so you have like a sort of centralized interface, so you don't have the guarantee that the Oracle will answer. You have the guarantee that the answer is authentic, but not that it will answer forever. Um, and this is like the cheapest option because it can be optimized uh, a lot and this is what has the optimization I just discussed. But we are also integrating with other like decentralized networks so that we can act as uh, an Oracle operator there. For instance, Chainlink is one of these. Um, and this is important for those applications that uh, value decentralization above all and that don't care about the costs. So this will likely be a more expensive option uh, for gas costs, um, but it gives extra guarantees on the fact that it will keep running forever. Um, so these are the, the features uh, um, we we have just seen. Uh, just some numbers. Uh, again, we have been uh, live since 2015, and there are now approximately 1,000 projects uh, based on our API for um, getting external data in. And on the Ethereum mainnet only, we have uh, processed approximately uh, 1 million queries. So it means that like uh, um, smart contracts on the Ethereum mainnet, I've used Oracle Eyes to get external data approximately uh, one million times, and this means that there are approximately, it typically goes between 100 and 300 contracts uh, per month, and these are like the unique smart contracts that reach out uh, to Oracleize to get external data in. Um, the random number generator is one of the uh, main components that is being used for the gambling use case. 
Um, this is like both certified. So if you are like a, um, a, a casino being run uh, like legally <laughs> with um, like um, license, you need to have a certified random number generator. So other than the authenticity proof that gives you a mathematical guarantee of the fact that the number is safe, if you trust the um, the provider of the um, of the hardware uh, isolation uh, uh, device, then you also have the certification. Basically, this is available on any blockchain, by the way. And this is like the uh, provable uh, security module, which is the machine we use to run uh, the Oracle service. And this is what contains the multi-T setup. So this ma machine contains different uh, trusted execution environments, and it can be used to secure proof of, uh, of authority networks uh, or an Oracle, such as in our use case, or I don't know, like an EOS block producer and much more. Uh, so just to recap, Basically, we have rebranded from Oracleize to Provable. So provable.xyz is uh, our new website. And we are adding new features while reducing the uh, gas costs, which is important to make the, or the Oracle sustainable in the long run. And um, like for decentralization, we are relying on uh, like external protocols. Chainlink is the first one uh, we are going to integrate with. And uh, like the provable random number generator um, is going to be available shortly also on Intel SGX other than on the Ledger Nano S. So basically you have a certified and uh, secure random number generator for your gambling DAP. And the provable security module can be used like for, to secure any application in need of a multi-T setup. Thank you for your attention.